Steve, we're back again. Dave, awesome. Thank you so much. Hey, it's great thanks, to see you again. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. So, how are you? What, what, how do you make everything so awesome? You just break it down for me. I'm, I'm not trying to be funny here. All right. I'm so not. This is relax. Funny. I would like to say that on days like today, I, it was like talking to a bunch of soup cans. I mean, I, oh. I, I was sitting there going like, whoa, I don't know. I don't know. If, is it me? Is it them? Maybe it's just dark. Is everybody depressed? Did everybody get dumped at Christmas? Is everybody thinking of dumping me at Christmas? Are they just fantasizing that oh, we should change churches this Christmas? I think that's what the Lord wants. Yeah, it was really. It was, it was you break it down for me, so it was them. It was, really, totally it was them. them. Well, I, that's usually what I tell myself. I like to pin all my problems on others. I think that's the Christmas way. So, yeah. so um, we there was some outsider discussion today, and how do we, you know, how do we bring people in like that? That's, you know, make them feel better. Make them feel like they're not. They're, they belong. They're with us. They're sure. one of us. Well, you know, I, I oftentimes think that the best way to make people feel like they're a part of something. Is, is to just look for a way to laugh at anything they say, not like to make fun of anything right. they say, but I, I think when, when people feel like they're winning, like they made a funny joke, you know, if you can tell them like, oh man, this is, this is it, you're in, then that, that's how they feel really good about themselves, yeah. you know? Oh, okay. So try, say something and then I'll laugh and so you'll get a good... Uh, <laughs> something! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so corny. It is corny. See, I'm laughing at my own joke. See? But you try and make you feel better. No, you're I there. love it. You make me feel better, Dave. I'm, I want to make you feel better. That's good. <laughs> it's tough sometimes. How can we, you know, what's the biggest thing I could do if I'm feeling outside, you know, besides, like, is it just, like, finding somebody, just trying to find you or finding anybody that yeah, you know? Well, or? Well, I think the important thing to remember is that at some point everybody feels like they're on the mm -hmm. outside. I mean, even wealthy people feel like they're on the outside when they get around a group of people mm -hmm. who don't like wealthy people. So we, we too often we imagine that the only people who feel like outsiders are the poor or the disenfranchised. But the truth is, everybody feels a little bit outside, especially when they come to church. So if you can be friendly, if you can be warm, if you can think to yourself less about how I feel okay and more about how I help others feel okay, th then I think the, the natural responses that you come up with, the, the normal ways that the Holy Spirit speaks to us, are, are going to steer you in the right direction. Have you ever felt like that? You ever felt like... I, like an outsider? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Like, how often? Kidding? Is it like all the time? or? Oh, <laughs> uh, honestly, yeah. Okay. No, so, I mean, I do, I do so, all the time, to be honest so, with you. Yeah, so like I'm, I'm really involved in a gym in town. I love my gym. It's fantastic. Um, but most of the time when I go to my gym, even though I know everybody there, you still come in and you go, yeah, man, I feel fat and I don't look in these pants. Oh, and, man. you know, geez, I wish I... And so you have all these outsider things going through your brain that even though they're not true, like even though I'm not actually an outsider at my gym, I feel like an outsider. And, and, and that's a, always a good r reminder for me. I go, man, I bet there's people who've been coming to West Winds for 20 years and don't even feel like they're on the inside because the social dynamics are such that we always struggle with feeling a sense of belonging. And, and the most effective way to get past that is to say, I, I'm just going to act as though I belong. And my role is instead of going to be as guest, my role is going to be as host. And so whether I'm at the gym and I want to invite other people to experience the good things the gym has, or whether I'm at the church and I want to invite other people to experience all the good things the church has, what I'm always trying to do is, is play host. Because I think that's what God does with us. Is everywhere we go, the Lord is hosting us. He's bringing us things. He's helping us understand, making us comfortable. And in those situations where it's naturally uncomfortable, he's giving us the strength to persevere. So, so yeah, How do hosting. You, what about if you're trying, like, you feel like maybe you're trying too hard to, like, like... Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you screw it up by trying too hard. But yeah. I look at it this way. I go, there's never a point in my life where I'm going to get it totally right. So if I worry about getting it right, then I'm not going to do anything. You know, the analysis of paralysis, they call it. So better to just make a few mistakes while swinging for the fences and trust that in the end it'll all work out anyway. Awesome. Um, so what's what's Christmas is coming. I'm excited about it. And... What's your favorite part? I just want to know. What's your favorite part about the whole, whole, oh, the whole deal? Honestly, gifts. Yeah. Hands down. Really? I, know, I, know, I know that I, that's yeah. probably not the right thing to say. What are you I, asking I, for? What do you, I saw no, Santa no. down I, here I like, a little bit ago. I just want to give gifts. That's my favorite part. Oh. I just like, my, my dad, we used to you know, give gifts to our dad, and he sucked to give gifts to. I'm sorry, dad. But I know you're not watching no, anyway, what, but I'm, what I feel you, bad. What do you mean? Because, because he never wanted anything. Oh. So no matter what you bought him, he never opened it. And he'd be like, oh, neat, some socks. And then he's got his whole closet is just full of like crap he doesn't want from us. I could actually go back through the closet. It's like a time machine. And I can go back and say, this is what my father didn't want in 1983. Oh. Yeah. So, so oh. I, I go, but now that I'm a dad and I get to give gifts all the time, I love it. Yeah. And then 
then when they give me gifts, I'm like, oh, that's so cool. I'll put that over here with my dad's gifts. So I'm like, I'm totally struggling with the, you know, I'm struggling with how much like him I am and trying to be good to my kids in the process, um, you know, and really enjoying what they get me or whatever, you know, but, but giving is fun. I'm, I'm Santa Claus. I am. Wow. I know. No, it's true. It's true. I know. Now my beard doesn't look so white. You're like, actually, Santa's looking pretty young. You know? <laughs> Dave, I appreciate your time. Can we do this again? Yeah. I, what are you doing in like an hour? Yeah. I'll be here. Okay. Thanks. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah.